dividend stocks. To some, they're a way to generate passive income and one day step away from that 9 to 5 job. To others, they're a consistent way to generate income from a portfolio of stocks without relying solely on the increase in the stock price. But the question is, how do you even find dividend paying stocks? Well, let's find out. Nailed it. As usual. <laughs> What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie Manila and today we're talking about how to find dividend paying stocks using ETFs and index funds. There's thousands of stocks that trade in the United States and because there's so many stocks that pay dividends, it can actually kind of be hard to find great dividend paying stocks that you should invest in right now. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you the flow I go through to find dividend paying stocks by relying first on looking at index funds or ETFs. I'm only gonna rely on free screeners or free companies that you can use yourself so at the end of this, you should probably be able to really just go ahead and do exactly what I'm gonna try to do if you wanna try to repeat this at home. So let's go ahead and let's get started. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> So when it comes to finding stocks, I call it like the rabbit hole of investing. Like, how far down are you willing to go down the rabbit hole? So for me, sometimes I go too far and like I overthink it and I never end up buying something because I feel like I don't know every single thing about the company and I think that sometimes that can be a bad thing and sometimes it can be a good thing. But it's about the rabbit hole. So like, for example, you have like the market ratios, right? So you have the P ratio, the price to book ratio, dividend yield, like all that stuff. Those are like the top layer for me of like the rabbit hole. Then like, are you gonna go into financial statements? Are you gonna go ahead and like look at growth of revenue? Are you gonna look at cash flows and things like that? Then you have like technical analysis. Are you gonna look at the charts? Are you gonna try to find only stocks that are breaking out or in uptrend channels or something like that? You have like comparables. Are you going to go through this whole industry and look at the competitors, the peers of the companies? Are you gonna like throw all that into a spreadsheet and look at all the comparables? Are you gonna look at the qualitative parts of the business? Are you gonna look at the management and see how the CEO is doing? Are you gonna, has its own giant rabbit hole. And so for me, I have to like kind of decide sometimes like how far down I'm gonna go. All right, so for today's video, I'm gonna try not to go too far down the rabbit hole. We're gonna try to make this like as quick as possible and just like show you what I do when I just like really ping around and try to find stocks to buy like kind of quickly and not go like too far down into it. So first thing, we use an ETF or an index fund. So which one do you like? It depends on you. I'm gonna use one called SCHD. It's a Charles Schwab dividend ETF. It's my favorite dividend ETF and I've made a video about it and I'll throw a link in the description or something like that. I'm gonna just go to Google, SCHD. I'm going to go to Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. That's their website. Over here, I'm gonna go and I'm going to find the holdings. I hit portfolio. I'm gonna go export holdings. It's gonna just export it into an Excel spreadsheet. And now I got the spreadsheet open. So these are all the holdings for SCHD. Nice and quick, really easy to get all this stuff. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to throw it into Finviz. So I'm gonna copy all of the ticker symbols here, and I'm going to then paste them into Finviz. So now I need to open up Finviz, F-I-N-V-I-Z. There we go, Google it, it'll open up. Sorry if it's loud because it's raining right now. So I got Finviz open. By the way, affiliate link to Finviz just below if you wanna sign up for a premium account, but you don't need to pay for this to do what I'm doing just need to sign up for like your email and stuff. So it's free, nice and easy. In Finviz, we're gonna go over to Screener, right here where it says tickers. I'm pasting all of the tickers I just copied right in here. I'm gonna hit this little arrow here. And now I have everything that I just copied from Schwab in Finviz. 
What do I want to see now? So now I'm going to go over to custom and now I have some certain factors that I like to look at. If you want to change this, all you got to do is go over here, hit settings. And now you can kind of add what you want to. So if you want to see like the price to cash, the earnings per share growth quarter over quarter, I don't have those things, but if you want to see that you can by just going to this area here. So now I'm going to get this out of here. And so I have a bunch of different data that I like to see now. I have like the PE ratio, the forward PE, price to sales, price to book, the market cap, the industry, everything I want to know about all of these different stocks, I have it right here. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to copy all of this stuff and paste it back into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, if you have the premium FinViz, you don't have to do this. I'm cheap, so I'm not paying for the premium. But if you hit this export button right here, then you could just export it yourself. So that's easier than what I'm about to do. But this is for anyone who doesn't pay for the version, the premium version, you can just go ahead and do this. I'm just copying it and pasting it right in there. So whenever I go and paste something into Excel from FinViz, I like to hit this uh, paste match destination formatting. It just makes it look the way I want to see it. And now I'm going to go back and do this for every page. So that's of course, the downside of not having the premium FinViz, you gotta go through every page and do this. So now I've copied and pasted everything in, but always pay attention to this top part because for whatever reason, sometimes it does not line up correctly. So I need to move this over. So company should be here. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna insert a table. So I'm gonna highlight everything in the spreadsheet. I'm gonna hit insert and I'm going to hit table. So now I have everything that I was just looking at in a table form and now I can go ahead and sort things that I want to see. Now we're going over dividend stocks in this video. That's what we're trying to find. But because Schwab is a dividend ETF, all of these are going to be decent dividend paying stocks. So they all have some yield. So the question is, what do we do to like now kind of dwindle down what we want to see here and like maybe sort this in a way that we can not have a hundred something stocks, but maybe get it down to like five or something like that. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to sort by payout ratio. So over here it says payout ratio. I wanna go to number filters. I wanna go to less than or equal to 60%. It's not any stock that has a payout ratio of more than 60% is not gonna show up because I don't really like to see stocks have too high of a payout ratio. Next, Let's go ahead and take a look at some like balance sheet stuff. So I wanna see what the debt to equity is for some companies. So here's the debt to equity. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to say that I don't want anything with more than a two. So go to number filters, less than or equal to, I type in two, okay? So now we've sorted all companies that have more than a two for a debt to equity ratio. Now let's look at companies that have increased revenue over five years. So right here, I have sales over the past five years. I just wanna make sure that I have companies that have positive sales. So I'm gonna say greater than zero here. Greater than zero, okay. So we still have quite a few stocks on this list. So now I'm gonna to go to the next part. I'm going to look at the target price of the stock. So this is the target price according to the average analyst target. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the current price of the stock and the target price. I'm gonna make a formula basically to show me the upside potential of these different stocks. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna type in upside, enter. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to equals the target price divided by the price of the stock minus one. And I'm gonna turn this into a percentage. I'm gonna go here, right click, I'll hit format cells. I'm going to go to percentage and here we go. And these are now my upside percentages. Now, what do I want for an upside percentage? Well, at least 10%. So go to number filters. I'm going to go to greater than, I'm going to type in 10% and there we go. Now I think we're good. We got a decent list of stocks here. So now we're going to kind of look further and further and try to find a good one. So let's start with the first one. So all state. Now here's another thing that I want to actually get rid of in the spreadsheet. I don't like to try to buy financial companies. I don't think I'm good at finding them. So I don't like trying to find financial companies. I'd rather 
honestly just invest in a sector ETF for financials. That's me. So I'm going to go to the sector and I'm going to uncheck financial. So I don't have any financial companies in here. And now we've actually gotten this even to less stocks on the list. So now I'm going to look at the first one, Best Buy. Now, interestingly, Best Buy is a stock that I looked at and talked about in the last video I made. It's one of my favorite dividend stocks right now to buy. So looks like we might end up going with Best Buy. And so let's take a look quickly at what we have here. We have a PE of 11.12, a forward PE of 11.83. So not high PEs, not a very expensive stock. Price to sales, 0.51. That's not a lot. Price to book, 6.28. Not bad. Price to free cash flow. 39.92, a little more than you would think with these price to earnings ratios, but not it's still fine. A dividend of 2.57%, that's the dividend yield, and earnings per share growth over this year, 18.9%. Um, earnings per share growth over the next year, it's projected to be negative uh, past five years, 24%. So great earnings per share growth over the past five years. Let's just kind of look kind of towards the end here. And I want to now look at some of the um, technical things. So how does it look technically? Over the past six months, it's had a negative 9.88% return. Not too bad considering some of these are even worse. The simple moving average, the 50 day, it's just off of that, not too bad. The 200 day, also just off that. So not far off these moving averages. The RSI is 50, which is pretty much neutral. The next thing I do is I look up something called the Piotrowski F-score. So now I'm looking at Best Buy, ticker symbol BBY. I go to Google, I type in BBY Piotrowski F-score Guru Focus. That's gonna take me over to Guru Focus, which also is free. You can sign up with your email, but you should be able to get to this if you go into Google and try to find it. Sometimes if you go straight to Guru Focus, they're gonna like make you have a premium membership to see it. But as you can see, I have it here. I don't have the premium membership. Although I do have an affiliate link below if you wanna get Guru Focus Premium. I think I'll finally get a premium if you get it. So you might help me out, that would be great. So it's got a F score of a seven. Now, is that good or bad? I like a seven, eight or nine, so it's good. If you wanna know more about Piotrowski F score, I will throw a video down below. It's all about Piotrowski F score, why I like it. Now I like the Piotrowski F score. Next thing I'll do, I'll go over here to the DCF. So discounted cash flow is what that stands for. It's got a built-in DCF here right for you. It sucks the stuff out of the income statement or the statement cash flows, whichever one you want to use. BBY DCF calculator. What do we have? Well, first off, you can take the free cash flow or earnings per share without an NRI. So I'm gonna use the free cash flow based discounted cash flow here. Um, the discount rate, so 8%, uh, maybe 7%. I think Best Buy is probably a pretty reliable company that's been around a while. So I'm gonna actually go with a 7% discount rate uh, for the growth stage. This is taking the growth of 16.5% from the statement of cash flows, which you'll see right here over the past 10 years, it's had a 16.5% increase in its free cash flow. Now, that's a high number, and it doesn't mean it's not sustainable over the next you know, 10 years, but it's still high, and I don't like it to be that high. I like to play it more conservatively, so I'm gonna go with like a 10% here and just see what happens. So with a 10%, I'm still at fair value a little bit better than fair value. So, okay, I, I don't dislike that. You know, I would like it to be a little higher than that, but it's okay. Because if this thing does end up growing at, let's say 15% over the next like 10 years, then we're looking definitely at the upside basically of going up another 34%, so good. So, okay, this would be a fair value target if that happened, $165. Or if it's a 10 for a growth rate, we're looking at $115. Now let's go back to the spreadsheet and see what it's at. So as you can see right here, the price of Best Buy is 108. So it's still lower than what I just got. And uh, as you can see, the target price of analysts is 130. So analysts actually think that this stock has higher to go. They're probably not using that DCF that I used with a 16%, but they're also not using a 10. 
So maybe, you know, they're going a little bit higher, maybe like a 12% potential growth rate of this thing. So here we go back to the rabbit hole. So where are we now? So are we ready to buy the stock? Do we want to go further? So for this video's purpose, I'm going to go a little bit further but not too much further. So I'm just gonna now go quickly look at the chart. Right now I'm on tradingview.com, also free, you should sign up. This is the, it's a great charting software. You can go here, it's, you don't have to download it, you can use it in your browser. You go to the chart function, I'm gonna go to BBY. Now, like I said, I already did a video on Best Buy and I've already looked at the chart, so I already know what it looks like, but let's see, cause I haven't looked at it in the past few days. So okay, what's going on with Best Buy? Well, we have RSI that's been declining. As I said, like it's a 50 is the RSI. So potential that it could stay here, could potentially go down further, meaning it's like more oversold. If we zoom in here, I already have some support and resistance lines. It's coming out of a downtrend channel, which is something I definitely like on this one. We do have resistance here at the 50 day and 200 day moving averages. What's gonna happen? Slight, looks like a little slight trend upward right now. Uh, it bounced off of this little Fibonacci retracement level that I had in here already. I don't think it would probably go further down than this area, and it's potentially going to come back up and go through those two moving averages. So what do I think of this stock? I think I would be okay buying this right now considering it just came out of a downtrend channel and there's a couple levels of support right around the area that's trading in. So I think I'm all right with it. The next thing is, do I want to look even further down the rabbit hole? So for me, I definitely would go a little bit deeper into this thing because generally I will go deeper for stocks, but in this video, I'm not, I will, however, go through some other things I will, I would look at first. So the next thing I would do here is I would go to quickfs.net, type it into Google. Uh, what's good here is like you see the financial statements, you can see revenue growth, what's been going on. So these are the things I like to look at. Next, I really wanna know about growth basically. Like is the company growing? Is it growing its revenues? It's operating profit, it's net profit, it's cash flows, it's operating cash flows. What's going on with the growth within the company. The other thing I will also look at, based on if you have a broker, for example, if you have Charles Schwab, if you have Fidelity, if you have Vanguard, you'll have access to some research reports. So now I have, I have Schwab open here, I typed in BBY, I got right here, you see some data. Just on the right side, as you go down here, you'll see the Schwab equity ratings, and then Morningstar analyst report. That's one of the things I really like to see, so I go ahead and hit Morningstar, and then this is what Morningstar is telling us about the stock. Other good other reports within Schwab, you have Argus, you have CFRA, you have Reuters, Market Edge, so you have all these different things. So this is where I think I will end the video, but what would I say? Well, I like Best Buy. I think it's a good stock to probably buy right now. You know, you can do this whole thing, go back to the spreadsheet, keep looking through different stocks, Keep trying to find ways to sort the stocks in ways that you personally like and would like to see in the companies you buy. If you like this video, hope it helps. Let me know in the comments if it's something you liked, if you'd like to see more of these kind of like tutorial how to find stocks, or if you'd rather just see the stocks I end up finding and liking. So let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And please watch another one of my videos, it's coming up on the end screen right now.